your day like every other day Sophia I'm the rotting leaves that the wind of life blows aside oh Sal don't oh Sal me Boss Farley is on my case again says I'm not loading enough coconuts hell I'm doing more than any of the others there and most of them are half my age what is it with that boon he has it in for me that's what it is he's only there because his uncle started the damn place I'm sure Mr. Farley knows what a wonderful worker you've been I doubt it all my time there he barely even knows my name. I should be in management by now. Hell, I ain't never once been late to work. You can't say that about them young guys. I remember you were late once. When was that? That time you had to make a stop at the little chimp's washroom early one morning on account of me serving white beans with dinner the night before, and on account of you being not so good with digesting them, and on account of your stomach. All right, all right, Sophia. Why don't you just announce it to the whole neighborhood? Speaking of which... I made you a nice dinner, Sal. Your favorite. Ant stew with boiled fish. Sophia, you know I like my palm wine when I get home. It helps relax me. Right away, Sal. What the hell is wrong with those boons? First they move into our neighborhoods. Then they talk all this equal rights nonsense. They want the same pay as us. The same schools. Next thing you know, they'll be marrying our daughters. This will make feel better. Already has. By the way, where's my little chimp? Oh, Isabella's upstairs. Well, should she be downstairs helping get dinner on the table? Isabella won't be joining us for dinner. She what? You see, this evening, our daughter has other plans. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ain't nobody run other plans by me. Last I checked, I was head of this here clan. I'm the one busting my ass here every day to put grub on the table. Any plan should be run by me. You see, Isabella's going out. I'm ready for my date. She what? That's what I was trying to tell you. Isabella has a date tonight. No, no, and no. No date, no way, no how. Papa, I'm eight, almost an adult. Why can't I go on a date? Besides, it's not a school night. My little chimp don't need to be dating you. You're still a young one. We're only going to get together with other friends, do a little dancing. You know what dancing will lead to? Am I right, Sophia? Trying to remember. Never mind you. Who you planning on going out with anyway? Dinner's ready. Hold on there, Julia Chimpini. I ain't got no answer to my here question. Someone I met at a swim with my friends at the river. What river? Lizium. What did I hear? She said Lizium. Oh, that's such a nice river. When I was little, my aunt would take me down there. Put a branch in it. Did you say Lizium? As in the same Lizium River that runs through Boontown? Papa, Boon is an insulting term. It's proper to say baboon. I can call him whatever the hell I want. Baboons are very nice and very smart. The only things those boons know is to leech off of everyone else. They want everything for nothing. What about Albert Sanchez? He invented fire and he was a baboon. Sophia, no one invented fire. He was lucky enough to just be rubbing two sticks together when a spark occurred. Don't forget, that spark caused the fire that nearly burned down the whole southern forest. Look here, little chip. I don't make the rules. They've been around since the great creator made us in his own image. We're number one. The chosen ones. All others are just an afterthought. Why would the great creator create other creatures then? So we can be reminded of how superior us chimps are. With your way of thinking, there can be no progress in our society. We don't need no more progress. Everything is fine the way it is. Except for Mrs. Manicotti's banana muffins. She puts too much salt in them. They're still delicious, but she used to not do so. But now when she does, you can taste the salt overwhelming the banana. I tried to talk to her about it, but... Sophia, put a branch in it. We're talking about my little chimp's future. Papa, will you at least give Adrian a chance? Once you get to know him, you'll see he's a good baboon. Please, Papa. Go ahead. Let the bum in. Thanks, Papa. Welcome to the Chimpini Dwelling, Adrian. Nice pad you chimps got. Is that a 24-inch jungle vision? My elders just picked up the new 32-inch version. 
much better picture. I wonder who they lifted it from. Adrian, this is my mother, Mrs. Chimpini. So nice to meet you, Adrian. What wonderful coverings. I never quite seen anything like them before. I make all my own coverings. I feel we need to express ourselves as individuals and not just accept whatever the big corporate machine pushes on us. Adrian, this is my papa, Mr. Chimpini. Put it there, big chimp. I'm not much for shaking hands. Don't be rude, papa. Quite a strong grip you've got there. You know the saying, strong grip, strong character. Speaking of which, those are some interesting coverings you've got there, Andrew. It's Adrian, Mr. Chimpini. Ain't that a girl's name? To quote the great writer, William Spiritry, that which we call a banana shrub by any other name would smell just as sweet. No one asked you. As far as the way I dress, I feel that everyone needs to express themselves as their own truth, not as mindless corporate pawns. Same coverings, same hairstyles, same thoughts. I'm all about the individual. That's all well and good. But who's going to hire you looking like a clown? Papa! My cousin Rose dressed like a clown. Come to think of it, she was a clown. Or was that my cousin Francesca? I get them confused because they were twins and both had the same mole on the left cheek. Oh wait, was it a mole or a birthmark? Fia, why don't you go see for yourself and let me know? Well, they live so far away. Exactly. Actually, I'm in no hurry to get a job. I figure I'll travel around for a while, see the forests, the seas, meet new species, pick up a new skill or two, be at one with nature, just like our ancestors, before the world became all about money and climbing the social ladder. Yeah, life was better when our ancestors climbed trees instead. That's all well and good, but what about when you have little ones? I'll teach them the value of self-sufficiency, self-respect, and what's really important in life, good moral character. How wonderful. That ain't gonna put grub on the table, Andrew. Adrian. Whatever. I apologize for my papa's old-fashioned thinking, Adrian. No need to. I experience it in my own clan as well. I don't know about your kind, but what separates us chimps from the lowers is that we have jobs. We own dwellings. We live civilized. We even have ice cream, which, I should point out, was invented by a chimp. Most important, the great creator gave us chimp souls unlike all the other dumb species out there. Reverend Franco said all living creatures have souls and are the great creator's children. Oh, please, Sophia. He only said that so as not to offend the others that come to his church. It's all about keeping them donations coming in. He don't really believe that. Papa, you're so cynical. That's another blessed thing the great creator gave us chimps. Cynicalism. I'm just curious, Mr. Chimpini. Where exactly in the great book does it say only chimps have souls? It don't have to. Everyone knows what it says between the lines in there. That's the problem. Everybody interprets it differently for their own self-interests. That has led to mine and many other species being disenfranchised, enslaved, and taken advantage of throughout the ages. That is what the whole baboon rights movement is about. BLM. Baboon lives matter. You and I are going to have a talk later, little chimp. Mr. Chimpini, all I'm saying is that our society has great inequality. Look back at our history and look at the leader we have now. And what's wrong with that great leader? He's one of us, ain't he? It's the issue. Everything he does, every law he passes, everything he states favors one species, his. That's even if you can consider him a legitimate leader. Hey, hey, hey. That's our leader you're talking about. He's the best chimp for the job. That's the problem. He's biased against all other species. I've only got one thing to say to you. Is... <sighs> See, my dinner is getting cold, and after a long day of work, I really enjoy my food. Not that you know anything about work. Thanks for stopping by, Sonny Boy. Papa, I will not let you treat Adrian Farley like this. It's not fair. <laughs> No one ever said life was fair. Thanks for coming. Wait a minute. Farley? Antonio Farley's my uncle. He manages Farley Coconut Processing. His papa, my grandpapa, started the company. Ain't that a coincidence, Sal? That's the same name as where you work. And you also have a boss with the name Antonio Farley. That ain't no coincidence, Sophia. Well then, Mr. Chimpini. I'll be on my way. Maybe some other time, Isabella. Where are you rushing off to, Andrew? I mean, uh, Adrian? We hardly got to know one another. You said your dinner's getting cold. 
Thanks, Mr. Chimpini, but I best be on my way. <laughs> Did I say that? What I meant was, you see, our dinner is getting cold. I was hoping you'd join us in meal. Papa, you're as easy to see through as a window. No one asked you. I believe in good manners, and that goes for all our guests. Even baboons? Never let it be said that Salvatore Cimpini don't extend an open hand to all of the great creator's creatures. Except worms. They don't have hands. Probably fish also. Thanks, Mr. Cimpini, but I best be on my way. Papa? Go, but don't be home late. Love you, Papa. Okay, okay, don't get all mushy on me. Don't forget to tell your uncle what a nice time we had. Sophia, what the hell is this world coming to? Mm -hmm.